Hey guys, Echo Sourx here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how powerful, very simple production concept can be. So I was walking home from Whole Foods, I had a rotisserie chicken, there's that green little rubber band around the rotisserie chicken, and I was plucking it and it was making a tune sound. So I thought, why not make a rotisserie chicken guitar? So we're going to be sampling a rotisserie chicken guitar in this video. I'm gonna make a little loop with it with a couple extra rubber bands I found, and then I'm also going to sample it into serum. So the idea is simply to find unique sounds, weird sounds, and to try to turn them into playable instruments. A lot of you will probably already do this with drums. You'll layer you know, coins, keys with a snare or whatever, or maybe you'll use like a field recording or some type of soundscape to get like a nice little bed, a textural bed in your production. We well, you can also do it with sounds that you can tune, right? So uh, one, of the, one of the coolest bells I made that was in our pack sphere was actually me flicking a coffee mug, like a little, like a, just a normal coffee mug, and it turned out great. So we're gonna check this out and see how it turns out. All right, so it took me about 10, 15 minutes to set up the, the multiple strings and to get the playable melody. And like I said on text, I added a salt shaker to the bottom of the three strings and some torn up aluminum foil, which overall added a little bit of rattle to it, which was nice. So we need to tune it. It's kind of close to being in tune, but not all the way. So what I've done is I've imported it into Melodyne, which you guys don't know. It is a application, software application you can run in your DAW or standalone that can actually tune polyphonic audio. So I scanned it, played it in, and now I'm gonna go through and just tighten up the tuning. All right, so I actually just quickly bounced that that uh, pitched corrected version in place. So this is what we have. So I also did time stretch or lock it, snap it to grid at 135 beats per minute. So now we have a little loop going. So what I want to do is I want to dive in and start to change a pitch here and there. All right, so I've pulled up a patch and serum. Let's layer this kind of weird, you know, the weird rotisserie chicken pluck with a more conventional sound. Let's uh, layer in some chords real quick. That will do the trick. Let me delete that mic take there. So, sounds good. I'm gonna uh, roll roll out some of the highs, roll off some of the highs and the lows, and let's add a little bit of LFO tool. All right, so now I wanna add a little bit more differentiation with the melody. That was too hard to do with the actual, uh, actually plucking the, you know, the actual rotisserie chicken. So I'm just gonna go in and chop up the audio and pitch it up or down. Use the power of the DAW. All right, so I wanna go up in pitch right here. And yes, I was just humming that out. That's actually a really effective tool if you guys are uh, trying to write melodies. Let's pitch this up to seven. And then let's do one more. Let's take this one maybe down a half step or so. Maybe that will work. Maybe let's try negative one. I should see what happens if we take. Let's see what this. Let's see what's going on with this guy. Maybe let's pitch this one up three. All right, so I've pulled up a bass preset. Let's lay this in real quick. All right, so now I'm gonna start processing our sample, right? We've gotten something musical going and now it's time to make this rubber band sound a lot cooler. So first things first, let's see what we got going on with frequencies. Not a lot of lows, which is good. Now let's go and add some distortion. I'm gonna go for sand, Sound Toys Decapitator. Um, I really like, where's it at? Drum Fattener 1. So I found that when you 
record something like a rubber band or you know, a coffee mug or a pencil or a click or anything that you're trying to create like a tunable, playable instrument, usually you have to get a close mic uh, a close mic recording of that sound, right? Like I did with this, so it's loud enough. Well, when you do that, depending on your source, it might be a little bit unnatural. It may not reverberate or resonate enough, and that's what I kind of got going on here. So I found that you can alleviate that, that problem by adding reverb in stages. The first stage is a short reverb. So that's what I've applied here. It's a very short reverb, sounds like this. Right, if you're listening on headphones or good speakers, you can definitely hear that difference. It's making it sound like the sound is reverberating within the instrument, really. Um, and so next, I'm gonna mess around with adding a little bit longer reverb. So we're going to add a bus here that has the FabFilter Pro R on it already. You can see that the, the decay rate is a lot longer. If I solo this, that's basically our room reverb, okay? And then let's add a little bit of delay as well. So another thing I like to do when I'm messing around with samples like this is try to do stuff with the pitch, right? And you can do what I did earlier where I just pitched the actual sample up in your DAW. But if you have a plugin that can handle pitch shifting that has a dry wet slider as well as format shifting, you can get a lot cooler sounds from it. So I'm going to use a plugin called Elastic Pitch. Now this plugin has some cool features to it. So uh what what you can do here is we'll just we'll uh let's see if we can I can't recall the default that is so I'm just going to click here. Let's link this. All right. So the reason I like this is because I can change the pitch. It sounds good. And I also have the dry wet, and I can change the format. So let's see what happens when we change the pitch. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to take one pluck from the rubber band and turn it into an instrument or patch in Serum. So we have this sound right here. And let's drag and drop this into the noise oscillator of Serum. So anytime you're trying to sample weird sources for melodic content, messing around with, uh, you know, getting in a synth, a sampler, a Serum, it could be contact, you can get some really cool results from it. So let's check this out. So there is our rubber band pluck inside of Serum now. All right, so let's actually create a wavetable with this rubber band sample as well. So I'm going to drag and drop after I name the pitch that it is. And then we have our little custom wavetable. Uh, this patch already had seven voices of, of unison, a little bit of detune. So let's try the whole thing now. So now we have a pretty cool patch from our rotisserie chicken. So let's actually just put in some quick chords with this. I'm gonna turn off the delay. All right, so let's open up the MIDI and let's create a pattern with it. All right, so we got kind of like a pluck going on. Let's bring in the guitar again, or the actual history guitar. All right, so I added some drums and this is what we have. And that all started from a rotisserie chicken guitar. So I guess, guys, to sum up this video, sample things, find weird, unique sounds. You never know what could take your track to a whole new level because really every melody, every chord progression, it's pretty much been done, right? The only thing you can do is make it sound different, wrap it in a new, unique way. And sampling weird sources like this is one way to do that. So if you have any questions or comments, post them below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video and want to see more videos like it, please hit that like and subscribe button. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time.